Harris takes on Erika Hirose. It's Fuji and Kakiwa up against Lee Onobanyana. And they will go all five matches, uh, even if uh, Japan, say, for example, were 3-0 up, they would go to matches four and five women's singles and then the final women's doubles match. But on court right now are the two players, one from Japan, of course, Sayaka Soto, and at the other end of the court, the American Rina Wang. Now, of course, Japan and America is a clash between two of the four most successful countries in Uber Cup history. Eight wins between them. Eight wins, though, in the first nine editions of the competition. The last being won in 1981 by Japan when the event was hosted in Tokyo. So a great pedigree as far as the Uber Cup's concerned, but going back a few years, Jill. Yes, absolutely. The uh, United States of America actually won the first three competitions. And as you rightly mentioned, well, Japan have had a lot of success, five-time winners. But all five occasions that they won was prior to China entering the World Federation at the time. And therefore, both China and Korea were not taking place uh, in those earlier competitions. And of course, in the latter years, China and South Korea have been pretty much dominant as far as Uber Cup is concerned, although Indonesia have been in the mix as well. Yeah, it's uh, certainly going to be interesting how the uh, Uber Cup develops and whether the uh, Chinese uh, ladies can get revenge on what happened a couple of years ago in Kuala Lumpur. But we're looking at Rina Wang here, who's going to be the sole female American representative at the London Olympics in a couple of months' time. Uh, the lady at her other end, Sayaka Soto, will be there as well for Japan. So. We mentioned the Olympics, of course, and we will be doing that throughout the week here in Wuhan. But it's important, isn't it, for these ladies and the men that we'll be seeing as well in the week that they are focusing right now on this Uber Cup and, of course, in the men's section in the Thomas Cup. Yes, without any shadow of a doubt, and, you know, and despite what I said just a moment ago, that they will see this as, as a good gauge as to how their form is going in preparation for the London Olympics. These team competitions are of such importance. It, it really is every player will feel a real responsibility towards the team. And of course, there's not much of manoeuvring as far as the team is concerned because you have to play in your ranking order. You can't suddenly put your third singles player in at number one. You can't change the order. It must be as stated on the world ranking list. So uh, it, it's going to be interesting. And of course, the, the leading players are going to be playing an awful lot of matches. Well, uh, the American team, for example, only has uh, five players in their team. so. Uh, we're going to be seeing Rena and Iris Wang, who uh, the ladies are going to be playing in the first singles matches. They're going to be playing in the doubles later. There's Tata Muliana, who is the umpire from Indonesia. And we're underway. The opening day of the Uber Cup. And it's Rena Wang who uh, wins the first point. And it's interesting to me, Richard, th these are two of the players in World Badminton who have desperately been searching for ranking points to try and qualify for the Olympics. And over the last 12 months, well, Sato has played 26 tournaments, her opponent 27 tournaments. Now, in badminton terms, that's an awful lot of tournaments they've played. And I'm really interested to see this encounter because I've had a theory about the left-handed Sato because to me, in the last few tournaments, her win-loss record that we saw just a moment ago for 2012, eight tournaments played and six times she's lost in the first round. To me, she looks a little bit drained and she's been looking a little bit under pressure in recent tournaments. Well, you, that shot there into the net looks a tired shot already yeah. in the opening stages. And it's not so much the physical tiredness. What I'm looking for in Sato is to see her, see that spark back now. Because she's qualified for the Olympics, all that pressure has been lifted, and I want to see her really show her the sort of form that I know she can play. On paper, this should be a, a fairly comfortable afternoon, shouldn't it, for the Japanese players? 
Well, they are the number two seeds here in the Uber Cup, so yes, it should be. And given the fact that Japan beat China in the qualifying zone, China were going to qualify anyway as hosts. So uh, that wasn't, you know, really of any significance other than Japan, huge psychological boost and confidence booster that they have beaten the unbeatables. So, you know, on paper, you're right, I think Japan should in theory, win this pretty comfortably. Sato in front for the uh, first time in this game. Five rubbers in all, best of three in each rubber. So much of singles is about trying to outmaneuver your opponent, use all four corners of the court, push your opponent to the back, then play the steep angled shots. But you think right at the start of the, the first day, first game, you'd be as fresh as you can be. I have to say I'm quite surprised by the selection because, in fact, they've, uh, Japan have got their fourth singles player in, in the ranking, played, playing third singles today. So I got to, uh, who's their second ranked player, is being rested for today's match. But if I was going to rest anyone, I probably would have rested Sato. But there must be a reason for it. I'm not obviously privileged to all the details of the Japanese selection. I, well, I mean, I'm only second guessing here, Jill, but as you've mentioned, she's lost six of her eight events this year in the first round. Maybe a chance to give her a bit of a confidence booster first up in a game that she'll be expected to win. Yeah, and very sound reasoning, if that is the case. now for Sato. Both these uh, young ladies, 21 years of age, both at, uh, at college as well. Soto, a uh, sports science student. Marina's at the University of California in Los Angeles, UCLA. That's out. So he bounces back with uh, three points in a row, Rina Wang. It's uh, Rina Wang with the advantage after Sato had won five points in a row. Wang bounces back with four of her own. And there's uh, Rina Wang's coach, the uh, coach of the USA, Chai Zi Min, who used to be the uh, national team coach of Thailand. He was the Olympic coach for the United States in 2008, as he will be in 2012. And, well, encouragement for... Rina Wang, and I'm sure they looked at uh, Sato's results, as you have, Jill, and said, you know, you've got a chance here. 
most definitely. And, uh, you know, it, it's so desperately difficult. You know, players, uh, they burst onto the world scene and when you're young and you don't feel pressure and you have no fear about playing, everything is a bonus in your own mind. And then you achieve some good results as Sato did silver medal at the World Junior Championships, of course, in 2008 in Pune in India, lost out to Saina Nawal in that final. And all of a sudden, it's very different for her. She's the Japanese number one. She's expected to win the whole time. A whole different pressure situation, the burden of expectation. And I think that at the moment, for a 21-year-old, I think she's struggling. Well, that'll be a bit of a relief. First point one in six for... Sayaka Soto. And Wang was on top in that point as well early on. That's long. Yeah. Affair, isn't it? it is and and you know I'm looking very carefully at the body language of these two athletes and there's quite a contrast to me you know, looks eager her coach. Very ambitious shot to try. Taking it late defensively on the backhand side. Trying to play it cross court. Really is over ambitious. It would have been simpler to try and just block straight, concentrate on that, stay in the rally. You're already under pressure. And right now, you wouldn't want to pick out a favourite here. Rina Wang ranked 59 in the world, Sado 15, but you wouldn't know there was such a gulf between them in the world rankings by the first 29 points here. better from Sato and at last a little bit of daylight coming towards the end of this game. No, I just missed it, just wide. what the sort of thing that bothers me Richard after the rally there we could clearly see that Sato was beating up on herself looking head down you know looking very depressed really and you can't afford to let your opponent see how you're feeling if you're down mm. yeah, I mean you can understand her frustrations it's uh, oh, she put a shot into the net that should be meat and drink to her but as you say a psychological game at times as well.
brings up the game points for Sato. And she has three of them. Wasn't straightforward, but the opening game does go to Sayaka Soto, 21-17. And I think given the way that uh, opening game was shaping up, that'll be some relief to her. Just 12 minutes for Sato to take that opening game. Must be nice for the, the one girls. Nice to have your sister abroad. I mean, they travel everywhere together. They obviously like they are here playing uh, doubles together as well as playing singles. And uh, must be nice to have someone so close traveling with you the whole time. Yes, absolutely. Because uh, in badminton, it, it, the money just isn't available in certain sports like tennis and golf, where you can have your own entourage travel with you, and personal trainers and physios and managers and agents and so on. In, in badminton, it's more of a, a solitary existence, certainly for countries from, you know, uh, the Americas and. and uh, Australasia and so on, they don't get funding from the government and therefore if you've got somebody in the team that you're close to, such as a sister, it's very comforting I think when you're travelling around the world. Well, Sato did win that in New Zealand last year but as Jill said it's uh, nothing better than a quarter final showing so far in 2012 but maybe put out first here to try and give her the confidence boost that will get her performing Japan hope of course in the latter stages Wang I'm sure will be uh, a little encouraged and have the feeling from that opening game that maybe she can get something out of this well she's the big sister four years between her and Iris who will be on court next uh, up against Hiroka Hiroshi but one game to love to Japan after that first game. That's a super shot. Goodness me, where did that come from? Great skill. Yeah, she might have to pocket that one and uh, find that a few more times. Just caught the net. That was a little unlucky that for Sato. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, been a couple of lovely shots. We saw that uh, smash from Wang. There's uh, been a little bit of a scrappy nature to this uh, game so far at the start as well.
hesitation on defensive play there. That's why she made the error. just no belief is there in, in certain shots with Sato it's like she's waiting for the mistake to happen so despite that she's uh, still got the upper hand here six points all now in this second game We saw uh, Chai Zee Min on the sidelines there. Am I right in saying Tony Gunawan does a lot of the coaching for many of these American players as well? Of course, Tony, though, is involved in playing himself here this week. Yes, indeed. And, of course, Tony Gunawan, former world and Olympic champion in men's doubles when he was still representing Indonesia and uh, then won a world title, two different world titles with two different partners, including Hal Bark from America. And that was back in 2005 when the event was staged in Anaheim in California and of course that really did inspire an awful lot more badminton in America and his influence on the whole team you know not only inspiring but as you say coaching technical work that he does with them he's he's a great influence and such a nice man as well yeah he's uh, gonna be at the Olympics as well and he hopes even at that age that he's got a shout for a medal I know uh, I read somewhere he's going to miss his son's second birthday, but sacrifices have to be made, of course, in the pursuit of uh, what would be glory, wouldn't it, if they can win another medal. So 11-7, Sato leading. She looks a lot happier now, as you uh, might expect, a game up and four points to the good in this one. see Iris at the moment the problem with them both traveling together and playing together is now and again they do meet each other in uh, women's singles as they did in the recent Polish international big sister won the day on that occasion well you'd expect Sato now to go on here and finish the job and put the put the first point on the board for Japan in this matchup with the United States of America on day one of the Uber Cup. better from Sato. 
Yeah, much better movement back in court to get behind the shuttle. And of course, she's got the option. She can play across court or straight as she did on that occasion. It's all about getting in position quickly. Jill, you mentioned uh, maybe the surprise of Aang Sato and uh, Aigato has been uh, rested here. What about the decision to uh, drop Moedo and Switzerna and uh, not pick them in the in the women's doubles overall for this Uber Cup? Go for a, uh, a different pair, a younger pair. Yeah, I haven't got to the bottom of that yet. I've been asking questions, but it does seem absolutely extraordinary because, of course, Japan very, very strong in the women's doubles, and they had three pairs in the top eight in, in the world ranking. But for the Olympic Games, you can only send two pairs. Now, I don't know whether Japan has said, OK, the more experienced players of Maeda and Suetsuna, we want them to concentrate their preparations. They've desperately been pushing themselves to try and get that qualification place. And if they're slightly injured or fatigued or whatever, maybe they felt, OK, we'll give them a rest, give them the opportunity to prepare for the Olympic Games. Let's bring in the youngsters, the inexperienced players, and give them the opportunity of the big stage. That that, I think, is my probably my only theory on that. It does weaken their hopes here this week, though. It, without doubt. Without doubt. Oh, an apology from Wang. Wang goes her way. A much needed one as well, just see it catching the net again every point lost for Sato looks like it's a, a match lost rather than what it is she's still a game up and three points up here she needs just try and get a win under her belt get a point on the board for her country and she's a couple of points away from doing that now three away yeah and I think it's a rally like that will which will really help her confidence because it was well constructed she was in command of it she was dictating the pace lovely good reaction criticized her in the opening game said she was slow on her defensive on her reactions that time absolutely perfect just missed the line Well, there's obviously still a bit of a weakness in the defensive play, isn't there, with Sato? So that uh, shot long from Wang brings up five match points for Soyaka Sato. One of them 
saved. Sade misses out. Saved or squandered. Yeah. <laughs> Quite right. But it's long the cross court from Wang, and that brings proceedings to the opening game to an end. Sado puts the first point on the ball for Japan. 21-17, 21-16, the scoreline. She had her struggles. She had her down moments, but she's come through with the victory. And a win is a win, as they say, Jill. It doesn't matter sometimes necessarily how you played or what the scoreline was, but if you get that victory, that's important. As you can see, confirmation. Siaka Sado with a 21-17, 21-16 win over Rina Wang in 28 minutes. Well, Richard, you know, as you were saying, a, a win is a win. I think we're going to see uh, maybe some of the highlights from that uh, opening match. But can't emphasize enough how the opening match sets the tone for teammates later on. If your player has put up a good performance and fought hard, even if they've lost, then you draw on that experience and it helps you in the next encounters within the tie so both players obviously japan players will feel very happy that sato has got them off to a winning start as far as the americans are concerned they will be happy that rina wang put up such a good performance